Coming up in this episode of Beneath the Surface, I discover how the Windy City's airports are pressing aviation's green reset button. Dilla the Urban Historian shows us his city. I learn how the Chicago River was saved by the community and our sailors hit the ice. One of the coolest things about SailGP is you get to see the best sailors racing the world's fastest boats. But as I visit the iconic cities on the SailGP circuit, I wonder what makes these places unique away from the race course. I've discovered people from all over the world striving for a better future, redefining social responsibility and driving technical innovation, redesigning how we think about sustainability. If you're interested in finding out what makes these places really tick, join me as we go beneath the surface. And this time I'm in a place famous for its lake, river and iconic skyline, the windy city itself, Chicago. SailGP heads to Chicago for the first time for round two on the season three calendar. Champions Australia won last time out in Bermuda, whilst the Denmark SailGP team presented by Rockwall recorded a solid fourth place. And the best place to watch the race in, from the city's finest open air stadium, Navy Pier, overlooking Lake Michigan. Now, Chicago's new on the SailGP calendar, so we've reached out to our man on the ground, Dilla, the urban historian, to give us a skinny on the Windy City. Here's Chicago in 90 seconds. Yo, what's up? It's Chicago urban historian Dilla here. I'm here to show you Chicago. For my money, America's greatest city. I mean, come on, take a look at it. Let's check it out. Now there's no way I can call myself a Chicago historian and not recommend the Chicago History Museum. How else can you see an artifact from the Great Chicago Fire of 1871? I'm standing in front of what was a hardware store. Don't worry though, we rebuilt everything. Are you the guy seen on TikTok? Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Let me take a picture. Awesome, thank Very you. Very nice to meet you guys. Nice thank to you. <laughs> And anytime I have guests visiting downtown, I like to bring them to this corner, Jackson and LaSalle, because we set the time zone for America right here. Another place I like to bring those who are visiting Chicago is this sculpture done by Pablo Picasso. If you're looking from the front, it may look like a horse. If you look from the side, it may be a lady. Who knows? Included in any Chicago tour has to be the very iconic Soldier Field one of the oldest football stadiums here in America. You got to come to the DuSable Museum of African American History. It's one of the places in the city that will show you how Chicago helped break the game of basketball, as well as teach you a little bit about Chicago's mayor, Harold Washington. Thank you for checking out America's greatest city with me, Dilla, your favorite urban historian. Be well. Hi, guys. Emery here. If you want to win my Ice Hockey Black Hawk shirt signed with my name on it, count the boats on the screen and comment below. Now, Chicago's a city famous for transformation. It's a place that literally created new horizons for itself. And through innovative governance and the will of its passionate citizens, is looking to rise to the challenge once again. I'll be visiting one of the world's busiest airports to investigate how Chicago is addressing sustainability through the aviation sector. I'll also be taking a walk down a city river once so polluted that it caught fire and meeting the group responsible for its rebirth. First though, let's find out more about the Windy City. Chicago is, I would say, one of the most American of American cities. We have something for everyone, whether it's arts, culture, architecture, design, our museums, our sports teams, our sports venues, the culinary scene. It's incredibly clean, it's incredibly green. We have something for everybody to enjoy, not to mention the connectivity with our airports to so many destinations around the world. You can get here and you'll be right in the middle of the US and that's why people come to Chicago and come back to Chicago. And when Cara says so many people come to Chicago, as a local, she would know. There are roughly 1,100 flights daily across their two biggest airports, O'Hare and Midway, serving 105 million passengers per year. So I thought it was worth a visit to find out how the city's airports are growing, both in size, but also in their approach to travel. 
I'm here in the brand new state-of-the-art Terminal 5 extension at Chicago's O'Hare Airport, a place that will soon welcome millions of passengers flooding in to visit one of America's greatest cities. The airline industry changed the world, but in an increasingly eco-conscious society, it's also under increased scrutiny. So, if the time has come for aviation to press the sustainability reset button, it's just as well that Chicago is leading the green conversation. We find today that our passengers are much more environmentally focused than in prior decades. And we've got to rise to that challenge, right? Those passengers are expecting more of us in our construction and our operations, and that's something that we want to accomplish for them. So for the last 17 years, we've been working on an airfield modernization program called the O'Hare Modernization Program. And that program was very focused on the runways and taxiways. But now, as we finish that, we're very excited to start a new program to reinvigorate the terminal complex. As we do all of these massive construction projects, we're very mindful about how much excavation do we have to do and how much pavement do we have to pour, because that all takes resources, whether it's vehicles or people or materials. And so while all the technology folks are working on better aircraft and better fuels, we're trying to look at how can we affect what's happening on the ground, on our property, and with the operations that we're conducting. But we're also mindful of the practices that we put in place and the materials that we purchase in order to make this uh, a balance between the business side, the community side, and the environmental side. So the Sustainability Airport Manual is really the first of its kind in the United States. We knew that we were gonna have uh, quite an environmental impact on the airport grounds itself. And in the United States, we have certification programs for sustainable buildings, but we really didn't have one for civil engineering pavement projects like building runways. So the CDA had a great idea, which was let's take those principles of certifying green buildings and apply it to certifying runways and taxiways. The Sustainable Airport Manual goes much deeper than many corporate sustainability plans where organizations might just be seen to be doing the right things. The CDA has integrated sustainability right in the DNA of O'Hare Airport using Rockwell's Rockfond products to create these incredible ceilings in the new Terminal 5. This is aluminium material, 100% recyclable, so it can be used over and over again. So we've got over 15 green roofs here at O'Hare. Uh, that's important for reducing the heating load on the building. If the plants are sustained, that means that that's less expense that we have just to replace roofing materials, which fundamentally are not sustainable. We have a herd of sheep and goats and sometimes other animals that come on the property and they are grazing in areas that are hard to mow. We don't have to use uh, gasoline or diesel powered equipment to do that mowing. One of the biggest impacts we have with operations is in the terminals with our concessionaires, whether they're restaurants or retail shops. So we're trying to keep an eye on them and make sure that as they're conducting their business, they're doing so in an environmentally minded manner. The airports are a tight-knit community and we share ideas and best practices with each other. So as we were planning and designing the O'Hara Modernization Program, it dawned on us that these ideas were something that we could share with our peers. And so we created the Airports Going Green Conference as a small affair back in 2007. And now, nearly 15 years later, it's, it's grown uh, and we're extremely proud of it. We want to expand that beyond the bounds of the United States. Uh, we have great partners with uh, some of our Canadian airports and we're looking forward to expanding that to the other continents around the world. So the CDA has developed some environmental goals for itself. And we use as the basis for that the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, particularly in the areas of reducing energy consumption, water consumption, and, and generating of waste. Those three, energy, water, waste, are very much on our minds. It's exciting to have millions of people flying in to experience our great city. And that's a challenge that we take very seriously. We want to make sure that those passengers have a fantastic experience and remember not just the airports themselves, but the city as a global destination. Historically, the Chicago River has been at the center of a few controversies, not least when the city decided in the late 1800s to reverse the river away from Lake Michigan to preserve its fresh water supply. An engineering marvel perhaps, but not an outright solution. It was once so polluted it caught fire, 
And as recently as 1979, a local magazine described it as an open sewer and friendless. But that's where the fortunes of the river began to change again for the better. And the Friends of the Chicago River was born. Hey, Margaret. Jono. Pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Welcome to the Chicago Riverwalk. And so this man named Robert Cassidy wrote an article and he basically said, what is going on? This beautiful river flowing through Chicago, we have to take care of it and we need a friends group. And so people called him up, a hundred people within a month called him and said, how do we be friends? And that was the formation of Friends of the Chicago River. So if you fast forward almost 43 years to today, our mission is to improve and protect the Chicago River system for people, plants and animals. And really our vision is that the river is a blue green corridor of natural connected open space. Friends of the Chicago River has worked through public policy initiatives and on the ground projects where we physically build things that improve the river and also education and outreach. Since 1996, we've educated over half a million students. But there's also programs where you can come out and volunteer. We have an event called Chicago River Day, which is our largest cleanup. So people can just join friends as a volunteer. They can visit our Bridge House Museum and they can send their kids to our school programs. Probably the most important things we've done besides really help change people's view of the river are improve water quality and so the Clean Water Act really drives water quality change in the United States and that's something that's set now in federal law and so we cannot go backwards. Providing places for nature in the city is really important. And if you look around the perimeter underneath, you can actually see a whole lot of fish. So there's little minnows, there's some big carp. So a little bit different to downtown, but Absolutely. what's the significance of this place, Margaret? Well, you know, we're at Labaw Woods, which is a Cook County Forest Preserve, but it's within the city of Chicago. And it's a really magical place. There's been a ton of work here to make the forest preserves healthier, which in turn makes the river healthier. So we're preventing erosion, we're helping the native plant community thrive. The Sale GP partnership is really exciting. So we're working with the athletes planting native plants in the toe of the bank and creating places for where fish can be protected, macroinvertebrates. So the project will actually uh, restore the banks. So when we get these harder, heavier rainstorms that the climate crisis is causing, they're actually protected. And so it'll be resilient as well as positive habitat. So the river really used to be fenced off and polluted and full of sewage. And today instead, it's alive with people, alive with wildlife, and its future is bright. A healthy river means that the locals can enjoy the water, which paves the way for cities like Chicago to host Sail GP, a platform that showcases the city's commitment to green solutions and sustainability. The power of sport is incredible, and it delivers for Chicago time and time again. You know, sport becomes the vehicle and the reason that people are coming to our city, and then they get to experience all of our city. It's the only event that we have that's on the water that shows Chicago from that specific vantage point during competition. I find it really unique and an incredible opportunity when we have an event such as Sail GP that helps us accomplish more than one goal. When you look at how they're powered by nature, the sustainability of the event, their concern about the environment and, and, and water and, and actually treating their stadium um, a, as the natural resource and asset that it is. And, uh, and that's something that's incredibly important to our city. Welcome to the latest edition of our Rock Challenge, and this time it's a little bit more slippery than usual. We're guests of the six-time Stanley Cup champions, the Chicago Blackhawks, and this challenge is going to leave our sailors on familiar territory, but thin ice. Now, the sailors are used to the demands of the Sail GP race course. They cross the start line, go through a few gates, and then head to the finish. So we've replicated that on ice. This time though, instead of a sailing boat, they'll put their ice hockey skills to the test by aiming to get the puck from the start line to the goal in the fastest possible time. All whilst navigating three legs of the course. And in a welcome change to their sailing gear, we've presented them with their very own Black Hawks jersey. Introducing Raz, the Iceman Kostner, the flight controller for the Denmark Sail GP team. Some say you can eat at least 12 ice creams at once. It's the big man, Julius, the fridge, Halström. And last but not least, it's the golden girl herself, Anne-Marie, the ice queen, Rinder. Is anyone good on ice? We're Vikings. Of course so we are. We should be. We love <laughs> I'm very on ice today. One is insane and the other one is actually really good. Well, I'll do my best. 
<laughs> this element is just so tricky. I think Julius is gonna smoke us all, so uh, trying to not uh, make myself look like a fool, I think that's the tactic. Yeah, I feel pretty at home here. This is a challenge that will suit me. I don't know how fast I am on the skates, but not 95 kilometers an hour at least. <laughs> Okay, the winner of the Rock Challenge, Cell GP meets Chicago Blackhawks was Julius. <laughs> well done. You know, I feel uh, very proud. I'd like to thank my parents, my girlfriend, all my fans at home. Really proud. Yeah, Sorry. So much fun. Thank you for doing all this. Oh. One, two, three. Blackhawks! Well, that's all from us here in the Windy City. If you didn't catch the racing this weekend, make sure to go to cellgp.com forward slash watch to see where you can watch it in your market. Don't forget to give Denmark CellGP team a follow at CellGP Den and catch you next time on Beneath the Surface in Plymouth as we return to Britain's Ocean City. Bye.